Alright, so what's going on guys? My name's Chopper and welcome back everybody to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about the 5 hardest Dark Ops challenges in Black Ops 4 Zombies. Now, if you're not familiar with what the Dark Ops challenges are in this game, these are challenges that are really, really tough regardless of the game mode. They're in multiplayer, Blackout, and Zombies and they require you to do something very specific and something that takes a lot of skill. Now, we're going to go over the toughest ones today that are in Black Ops 4 Zombies and I'm also going to give you strategy on how to complete them. So if you guys end up enjoying the video, then be sure to to leave a like rating on it as it does help me out a lot thank you so much also make sure you do subscribe if you are brand new to the channel as we are getting really really close to 200,000, which is our goal of course and with that all being said and out of the way we're going to talk about these hardest dark ops challenges in black ops 4 zombies how to complete them and get the great rewards that it gives you for beating them successfully so without further ado let's go ahead and get started so the first Dark Up challenge that we're going to talk about today is called Dodgy Devil. And the way that you unlock this one is you need to go a full 20 rounds in a classic playlist. So that means you cannot tweak with any of the mutations. You need to play on the normal settings, but you need to go a full 20 rounds without taking a single hit whatsoever. I know that's pretty wild. A full 20 rounds without any damage whatsoever can be a little bit of a daunting task, but I recommend that you play this one on classified as this is the only map that doesn't really have any uh, enemies that can hurt you with a projectile. So if you want to camp this out in the elevator with the current perk setup that I have and then whatever weapons you can get like LMGs work great. Anything Pack-A-Punch will really be able to help you out. And then Time Slip is a really great perk for this one because you can keep spamming the elevator as long as you have points to get an in and out of cover. If you don't have classified, you can also play this on Blood of the Dead, and you can camp maybe up at the Warden's house. Either way, your only goal here is going to be to hold down a specific spot and camp for about 20 rounds in a very safe and secure location. But once you get the strategy down and you understand how it works, it really isn't too bad to get this Dark Ops challenge done, but it just seems like one of those things where 20 rounds without getting hit at all doesn't seem like it's very natural. I'm also going to strongly advise that you try to do this challenge in a solo game. You can do it technically with multiple players and you can do the same strategy however i'm pretty sure it's a per player challenge so if you're playing with let's say a three or four player game if other people in there take a hit it shouldn't affect yours as far as i'm aware but i do recommend this as a solo game as it will go quicker there will be less spawns overall and you'll just have more control over the game in general you won't have to rely on other people or teammates letting a zombie through screwing anything up so this is easiest done by yourself and that's not the case for all the dark ops challenges but if you'd like to get the dodgy devil one unlocked this is how i'm gonna recommend you end up playing it it's absolutely one of the harder challenges in the game but i know that if you employ these tactics you can absolutely do it but let's move on to our second dark ops challenge here and see what we got coming up the next Dark Ops challenge we're going to talk about is a very, very interesting one. This is called Perkless in Prison. And the way that you acquire this particular challenge is to do the Blood of the Dead Easter Egg, and you can probably see where the kicker comes in. You have to complete it with no perks at all. And I'm going to recommend that you do this with more than one player. This is really not a super solo friendly challenge. Uh, when I was trying this, I was running this with my buddy Noah, and we ended up getting uh, pretty much through all of the challenges. It ended up glitching out at the end, but we found out that the biggest problem was doing some of the challenges without stamina up because it really hurts when you don't have that extra movement speed and perks really do make a difference when it comes to this easter egg but if you're able to get to it you know with two or three players maybe even a four player game with no perks at all then you can get this challenge now keep in mind this is a per player one so if you are playing a co-op game if you want to get the challenge by yourself your teammates can grab perks however you cannot but you still have to end up beating the entirety of the easter egg to unlock this dark ops challenge when it comes to an extra strategy that can help you complete this there's not really anything in the ways of being helpful because perks is a big part of that and strategizing but since you have to run with no perks at all i'm just going to recommend that you don't try it solo as it's going to be significantly harder on yourself two or three players will be fine and honestly they can run perks if you want to get the dark ops challenge maybe one at a time or if they don't really care either way this is the way to do it complete the entire blood of the dead easter egg with no perks from start to finish and if you do that successfully you will unlock perkless in prison a very very cool reward and a super you know interesting challenge as well well, but that is our second one. Let's go see what we got coming up next. The next challenge we're going to go over today is called Sands of Time, and this is one of those ones that if you're into Easter egg speedrunning, this should be right up your alley. What you need to do to complete this is beat the nine Easter egg in under 100 minutes. So essentially, that ends up being about an hour 40, which really isn't you know that too bad to be honest. If you're fast about this, you can complete the nine Easter egg in around 45 to maybe 55 minutes with a four-player game on solo. You can do it maybe in about an hour if you're quick, but it's not one of those things that is a 
super like small amount of time you have a little bit to work with when it comes to this challenge but nonetheless this is still a difficult challenge i mean first of all you have to end up beating the night easter egg which not everybody is going to end up doing but not only that you are also on a time crunch granted the time crunch isn't you know super strict but still some people like to take their time during quests like this or they watch tutorials in game and they just run around a zombie but all of this time if you're trying to do this challenge you're going to be burning that precious couple minutes that you do have to end up beating this easter egg given the amount of time that you have when it comes to strategy, while it is completely possible to do solo, it's not something that I very much advise. I'm going to say I suggest you play in a four player game as if you have four competent players who are all doing tasks at the same time, that is going to be no matter what the quickest way to burn through this Easter egg. So for some reason, if you're just not making the time, if you're not able to complete it whatsoever, run with a four player game with people who know what they're doing and you should have no problem getting the Sands of Time challenge done along with getting that super sick reward. But if you're into speed running, you should be able to absolutely smash through this dark ops challenge no problem but that sands of time let's go and move on to our next one and see what we got going on there the next dark ops challenge we got is called sea legs and this is my favorite for a lot of reasons you have to end up doing the entire voyage of despair easter egg but you have to do it flawlessly so you cannot take any downs throughout the entirety of the match you can run perks that's absolutely fine but you cannot take any downs if you want to end up getting this dark ops challenge now the easiest way to get this done is definitely run it in a co-op game it's possible to do the Easter egg solo and flawless, but you are definitely putting yourself at a handicap if you're not running this with other players, because just the way that this Easter egg works, you have more protection and you're, le you're less likely to die if you have more teammates on the battlefield. Another thing you can try doing, I've never tried it myself, so if maybe wants to somebody wants to start this strategy, is to run the Voyage of Despair Easter egg and try your best to do it with bots on. I don't know how that would change the game or whether it would be better or worse, but maybe it's worth a shot. It could save you taking it down. The bots are like absolute tanks in the game so maybe they could end up providing you protection during the boss fight and the challenges the rituals they have to go through during these process and not to mention when you do beat this challenge you get a really sick calling card as well it's one of my favorites it's the one that i'm actually wearing on my player card right now so it's super cool if you want to get this one then all you need to do is complete the voyage of despair easter egg without taking any downs throughout the match but that is how you can complete the Sea Legs Dark Ops Challenge. Now, before we unveil our number one Dark Ops spot or the last challenge you can go for right now, we're going to talk about an honorable mention that was recently discovered really not too long ago. And this one is pretty crazy that this has already been discovered given how early on we already are in the game. You know, it's not even been out that long. But the way to get this Dark Ops Challenge, the name of this is called Reaper of the Undead. And what you need to do in order to complete this Dark Ops Challenge is get a total of 1 million million kills overall that's actually pretty crazy considering the amount of hours and just kills that you need to get per match and the, concerning the fact that the game's only been out this early the fact that somebody has already unlocked this one is pretty wild honestly to complete this one i don't advise glitching i do recommend that you just play a lot of high round games as you'll be surprised about how many kills you rack up if you just play for a couple of hours and uh, really try to go for a higher round on some of the maps you know nine is a very easy high rounds map blood of the dead with the right strategy can be very easy as well pretty much anything if you know what you're doing you can rack up tons of kills on and if you do want to get this dark ops challenge as quickly as possible this is probably the way to go now if you're someone like myself you play easter eggs and high rounds back during black ops 3 i played a good bit of both and i had ended up with probably around 70 days played on that game and i think i had around 3 million kills so if you want to kind of go off that about how much time it's going to take to unlock this one for bo4 maybe that's a decent ballpark estimate again every game is different but it's something to consider you'll probably have to put in a decent bit of hours in order to unlock this challenge but it, i mean it is a challenge for a reason but ladies and gentlemen that is how to unlock that particular dark ops challenge but let's go see what we got for our final one here and how to unlock that one and the best strategy to get that as well ladies and gentlemen the final dark ops challenge we're going to talk about today is called put to the quest and the way that this one is completed is by doing the main easter egg on the three on disc maps at least once so that means you need to complete voyage of despair nine and also blood of the dead at least one time and that can be asking quite a lot considering some people can only complete one easter egg or they're you know really struggling on a map and they cannot complete that second or third one but in order to unlock this one you have to do all three at least once and when it comes to strategy i recommend that you find a squad that's really good at easter eggs you can play with or not if you just want to run them solo that's absolutely fine as well i really like running solo easter eggs and believe me they are all definitely possible to do in this game but does that mean it's an easy task not in the least but if you are skillful enough 
enough to complete all three of these maps at least once you will be awarded the calling card as well as the dark ops challenge put to the quest and it's definitely this one is for sure a bragging right if you can show this off to your friends you can tell them that you've completed all the easter eggs on every single map and honestly not i don't expect a lot of people to have this one done at all maybe some people will only have one map in their entire career and if you have all three then you're already way ahead of the game but anyways guys those are going to be the hardest dark ops challenges so far in bo4 there are still a couple that have not been unlocked yet but i reckon that these are going to be probably of the tougher ones so far there are a couple more dark ops challenges that are really easy that have to do with points and stuff like that but these are definitely the ones that i would go after and really put your efforts towards doing and if you want to and you need any help completing some of these challenges or doing the quests on the maps feel free to join my discord server where you can go and find people to play with regardless of whatever platform you're on it's a really good community and i encourage you to go join up so that will be linked down below inside of the description and also don't forget to follow me on twitter if you don't already this is a side note but we're almost at 10,000 followers and I, I would really appreciate if you could hit that very soon it's a good way for you guys to talk to me outside of streams and outside of my content and a good way to keep up to date with everything that's going on in the channel but anyways guys i really hope you did enjoy the video thank you so much for watching appreciate you coming out have a good one guys and i'll see you all in the next stream or the next video peace out